I'm hanging out with Zed's Dead. How are you guys doing? Welcome. Good, uh, man. How you doing? Thank you so much for talking to me. I appreciate it. Does that get frustrating? Do you guys like get that a lot? Like, oh, are you Zed's dad or Zed or like? Well, we used to get it more. There's nah. more confusion back then, and then now he's just kind of nah. we've gone like in such our own directions. You know, I feel like there's less, but there's, there's definitely still like a small amount of confusion. And uh, we had a boss. The uh, boss is like, oh, Zed, what do you mean interscope? Like he's under interscope. Yeah. But, well, I need to call interscope right now and get favors. <laughs> are, we, are we spinning them? I can like, no, man. It's just <laughs> Zed's dead. They go, oh, okay. <laughs> I see, that's the problem with not being... I bet there's more behind the scenes confusion than we know about. Yeah, yeah. I don't see it very much. You used to get more like tweets coming in that were uh, confused people, but now not as much. We, we, we addressed this issue in an episode of our show, Coffee Break. Yeah. Ah, is that, is that with a, is he's that the same friend, way as Dead Mouth? Like, yeah, he's our buddy. That's what's up. Yeah. yeah. We're, like, yeah. we're playing the same show. Hell yeah. Dead Rock. Dead rocks. Dead rocks. <laughs> I, know, I was in Vancouver for a gig uh, last weekend. I don't know what it is. Is what's the deal with Tim Hortons, man? Everyone loves that <laughs> it's stuff. It's like uh, Canadian crack. It's, yeah. it's just to me, it's just coffee. I don't know. I was like, we we'll see what everyone's talking about. Yeah. The donuts are pretty long. People go nuts. Essentially, for it. Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, but I feel like it's more of like. Like it's more of a widespread Canadian love than Dunkin' Donuts is to America. You know? <laughs> it's kind of like when you're on the highway and you want a coffee and you're not a donut. You get a double double. There you go. Um, ah, yeah, now a it's box like, of Timbits. Man, you guys know about double double and pretzels. <laughs> that's a sugar. Oh my god, double double. No, that's what they call it in Tim Hortons too. Oh really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, I guess they call it that everywhere. What is that Dunkin' thing? No, I that's that's an In-N-Out thing. Oh it's southern, right, yeah. It's yeah. a Southern. That's like a, you're from SoCal. You know about it. Yeah, yeah, I wish yeah. we had In-N-Out. Yeah, we need that shit. Yeah, that's pretty we just got five guys I don't know how many people wish they had Tim Hortons in America, though. I don't know. I don't know Probably how many. Less. There is a Tim Hortons in New York. That's yeah, true. In yeah. Times Square. Yeah. Like, I don't think like some idiot to. tourist goes to Times Square and is like, Oh, honey, they got a Tim Hortons here. I feel right at home. <laughs> that's how the radio radio DJ sound it. They go, it's Vancouver's number one hit music station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a... Uh, the Radical no. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And you guys are in LA right now, too, right? Yeah. What's the big difference between living in LA and then, you know, Canada, especially Toronto? Well, we kind of come out here for during the winter because it's like nice weather. Yeah, that's the biggest difference, the weather. And you don't miss it? <laughs> you don't uh, miss East Coast? I wish we could flash to like a snowstorm in Toronto. Right <laughs> Apparently it's minus 21 degrees Celsius. I don't know if that is in Fahrenheit, but it's... It's about as cold as it gets. Like, uh, I don't know either. We're, we're, I don't know. Snow I don't, everywhere. Yeah. Snow everywhere. And uh, yeah, just, and just upset it's, people. Yeah, LA is nice. It's like a hub for creativity too. LA, like there's always people coming through, so yeah. it's good for us to be there. Like it's kind of a, a half vacation, half way to parlay it into like working with tons of people and doing taking meetings and stuff like that and just being productive. And we see that I know I definitely guys are opening up your style. I think you guys have been known for for dubstep and you know now it's changing up with the Oliver Heldens record it's what made you decide you know hey we want to try something different well we've been doing different stuff forever I mean like actually some of the first records we did as Zed's Dead were like Electro House and House Tunes um, we just weren't as big then so I mean people's perceptions are different like but the ones that caught on were predominantly dubstep yeah so those were our like, biggest oh, tracks in the beginning artist, yeah. but we've been doing a lot of stuff for ages and kind of over like the last year, I think we've really been trying to drill into people's heads that hey, we don't just do one thing. We're uh, multi-genre. We just kind of do whatever we feel when we get in the studio. And that's kind of you know, it gets especially here. Like you also say, you're oh, the EDM bubble. You guys are not. You guys are EDM. So it's safe to say you guys don't do EDM. You just do M, <laughs> right? M, so M, whatever M is. Yeah, that's yeah, me and Don are just doing M all the time. <laughs> yeah. Lots of M. We love M. <laughs> Makes you feel good. But yeah, no, I don't even like the term EDM. Though. No. I, you know, I'm happy to be a part of it because it is an awesome scene, but I just I feel like that term is so, it's such a blanket. Like yeah. There's so many cool genres and things within that, but when you say that, it tends to make you think of just the most corny stuff that ends up at the top. So. Well, also it implies that you always have to, like electronic dance music implies that it's always dance music, where yeah. some of the stuff that we do isn't dance music necessarily. Like, mm -hmm. that's why when people ask us what we do, often I'll say, we make electronic music, you know? Because some of the stuff just meant for chilling too, or maybe you could dance to it, like weird interpretive dancing or something, but you know, <laughs> uh, it's, it's not always like, it, EDM, it, it makes it more of a box, you know? Or you guys definitely like, have hip hop influences too. I yeah. see it, you know, in your mixes, like you, you mix multi-genres, and that's, 
that's something you know I I'm I hope more artists did you know they put you know just it's not just the same the drop and that's it you know the stuff that you just hear non-stop like what may what makes you guys say we want to be different and not just follow the trend well it's just when you're talking about hip-hop like that's how we started making music with hip -hop, so always Mm. And with mixes and stuff, like I don't know, we used to listen to like 90s and podcasts and different people that would do a lot of multi genre stuff and that had a big influence. But yeah. It's not like we consciously get in the studio and be like, hey, we want to be different from everybody else. I think it's just the, the combination of our influences and coming from different places. Like he was saying, we had a group before Zed's Dead where we just made like old school hip hop beats and then we got into drum and bass and then Electro House and then Dubstep and all sorts of different stuff. So we just try to bring all that shit together. Also like the Essential Mix, like that show, a lot of people who do that, uh, they do, they show a lot of different styles, we always like that. And you guys have done an Essential Mix, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. 2011 or 2012? I forgot. I think it was 2013, like the very beginning. Yeah. yeah. It, was 2012. It, was, it was definitely later than 11, 12 or 13. Yeah. <laughs> but all the time is kind of just melding together, right? Yeah, that was so a cool thing to do. Is. We went the direction of just trying to make it sort of the culmination of the last four years and just making a mix of all that dead stuff. Definitely. Is it fun doing that? Is it, you know, different, like, man, just, you know, especially for mixes and festivals, you guys have to sit there and think, okay, I want to play this, I want to play this, I want to play this. Do you have to, like, say, hey, this record can't just make the mix for this mix? Is it a hard process or pretty simple? Sometimes it's hard to, like, I don't know, to cut things, but, you know, it's like I, time constraints. Yeah, I think, like, we got, we got, what, two hours for the essential mix? And, and I think it's the same with sets, like we, we, when we get longer sets, we enjoy that because we get to be, take people on more of a ride mm -hmm. and include more stuff. And since our catalog is so varied, it's good for that. Like when you do a festival that's like an hour long, you gotta kinda, we well, don't have to, but we try to keep it more energetic for the most part. Whereas throughout two hours, you can dip and come back up and go all over the place. That's true. It really takes people on a ride. And a fun ride, Zed's dead ride. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Chopper ride. <laughs> Without the Tim Hortons, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Maybe a little bit, I don't know. And then, <laughs> it's okay, I'll, I'll drink with the Double Double, right? Yeah, yeah. And, some tin, <laughs> and some Tin Bits. Oh, and an ice cap. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And now radio play. I know in Canada you guys are getting serious radio play, and now you're starting to, you know, you're getting on the, on the radars of program directors here in the States, DJs, mix shows, and things like that. And the one question I always like to ask artists, when was that first time you heard your song on the radio, and how did it feel? That's been lost to you, right? Yeah, was, well, it depends, like, BBC, but the first time we heard it on, like, radio in Toronto was the song Lost You. For me, I was in, like, a shawarma place, and I had ordered, like, my order, I was just waiting, and it came on, and I was, like, blown away. And, and everyone in there, you know, it was just, like, in the background. They had no idea, like, I was standing right there. I don't know if they would have cared, but, like, <laughs> it was, like, it just seemed crazy to me. Yeah, I had the exact same experience in, in a sushi place when I was eating with my girlfriend. We were just sitting there and it was like it came on. And it, it's it's a weird feeling, you know? We were like, oh my god, oh yeah. my god, my song dropped my shawarma. Habibi, oh my god, Habibi, no! <laughs> this is me, guys, this is me! <laughs> this Got up on the counter and started dancing. <laughs> and now that you guys are getting more, you know, more serious looks from, you know, in the top 40 side, the EDM side, and you know, you know, now that you know, you could hear a Zed's Dead record probably next to a Katy Perry and then into a Kanye West. You guys, especially in the States, have, you know, just have your own following, diehard fans. Are you guys worried, and I was like, are you guys worried about that whole selling out concept when, you know, it's inevitable that you guys make it to that top 40 scene just by the way that you guys are blowing up. Are you worried, like, oh, should we be a niche artist or let's just make M? You know, I think, like, um... I was saying it before, like, we've always, as, as they kind of try to drill into people's heads that we do all sorts of different stuff, and people have come to expect that from us, I think. So whether, you know, they like the more recent stuff or they like the older stuff, um, they know that we're always going to be doing different stuff. And, and some people talk, like some people hate, you know, on, on different things that we do, but I think the Die Hard fans know that we're just going to keep mixing it up. And it always comes from a place of just creativity and trying new things. like. When we make songs, it's like it, it just what inspires us that day. It's not like, let's make you know, a song to be like on the radio. It's just you know, nice. that we do it, and then we're like, you know, this one maybe would be good for the single, but it, it's not like we go into it thinking that. So I'm not worried about that sellout concept at all, because we mm -hmm. always just do the same thing, which is whatever we feel like. Yeah, as long as we don't feel like we're doing anything <laughs> sellout-ish, uh, we're fine. Last question, what's the next big thing, because that's dead. Well, 
next we're working on our album. Yeah. We're working on our album right now. I mean, we kind of have been for years in life, but now we're putting a lot of tracks together. Mm -hmm. so That's what mainly what we're focusing on. Yeah, we took. We took some time off touring the last couple months and just have been like buried in the studio making music. We can't wait to hear it whenever it comes out. I know it's going to be amazing. Zed's Dad, thank you so much. I know you guys got a busy schedule. Appreciate you guys yeah, taking time by and stopping by. Thank you. Uh, what's up? This is Zed's Dead, and today's hit music is on Z90.